Sarah is an 11-year-old girl who claims to have seen God, and since then situations begin to occur in her environment without any reasonable explanation. Maybe the wind woke it up? The little girl goes to church with her family every Sunday, where the pastor comments in his speech that faith can move mountains if you trust God with all your might. So, Sarah grabbed those words for herself and when she arrived at a lake, along with her brother and his girlfriend, the little girl saw a lifeless bird, which she insisted on reviving with her prayers. Maybe if we pray he'll come back to life. The incredulous young couple told her that it was dead, but the girl insisted and she waited for the bird to revive. Please bring him back. The couple leaves to go fishing. When they return, they are shocked to find Sarah on her knees saying that she saw God floating on the lake. You see him? Then the wind blows and the bird that was in Sarah's hands suddenly comes back to life, leaving the incredulous young couple speechless who can only associate what happened with the wind. Maybe the wind woke it up? Returning home, Sarah tells what happened to her grandfather, who tells her that she has always known that she was special. I always thought you were kind of special. Sarah was impressed and immediately calls her friend Mark, who is in a wheelchair due to a spinal injury. Upon hearing the story, the boy does not pay attention to him and does not take it seriously, but Sarah insists and swears by the Bible, which makes Mark reconsider the veracity of the story. He looked young and kind. Before going to sleep, her mother enters the room and asks her to thank God for the day and all the good things that have happened to her. Surprisingly, the girl tells her that God will take her away soon. I want to die, but I want to go to heaven. No more talk about dying, okay? Those words left her speechless and she withdrew very worried. In the middle of the night, Danny wakes up and tells his parents that Sarah is not well. They immediately locate the family doctor, Dr. Ben who quickly comes and determines that it is a simple flu and that they should not worry. Thanks, we will. Dr. Ben leaves and Sarah's father enters her room, where he sees a beautiful drawing of God in the lake. You drew this? Yeah. Days later, Sarah and Mark are surrounded by other boys who make fun of her, calling her stupid for saying that she revives the animals. Mark feels very sorry for what happened and confesses that he told everyone about the miracle since he was very happy for her. My frog died last night. Could you bring him back too? Uh. Danny and his girlfriend Cindy watch the boys attack her from afar, but the boy decides to confront them by kicking a soccer ball directly at one of the bikes that one of the boys was carrying. Didn't your parents ever tell you not to pick on girls? Then a member of the opposite soccer team shows up with his dog to make fun of him. Still trying to make up for your pathetic game the other day? But at that moment he watches how his dog is hit by a vehicle that passed at high speed, leaving the canine lifeless instantly and the young man, full of pain, bursting into tears. You killed my dog, man. Hold on! It was an accident! Oh, yeah. Seeing the situation, little Sarah approaches and begins to pray for God to save the helpless animal, which minutes later the pet miraculously gets up as if nothing had happened before the astonished gaze of all those present who were left speechless before the miracle of the girl. <laughs> Days later, Mark full of faith asks Sarah to heal her spinal injury. The girl does not believe she can achieve it because it is an incurable condition, but she begins to pray to God for the recovery of his friend. Do you think you can help me walk again? The next day Mark goes to a medical checkup with his parents, where the doctor routinely asks the child to try to move his toes, Unable to believe what he sees, he realizes that the child's toes are moving but warns that it does not mean a recovery, since the little hope was not in the diagnosis. I can't explain what, what happened. In a matter of minutes, Mark manages to stand up and walk without a problem, leaving everyone present shocked and thanking his friend Sarah for his prayers. Oh my. At that moment, a journalist who was on the premises decides to take note of what happened, causing Sarah to be seen on television publicizing his ability to perform miracles. Hey guys, look who came to say hi. The pastor together with the doctor decided to go and deliver the good news about his friend to Sarah, who openly thanks God for the miracle. The pastor, very sure of what had happened, asked the girl about her experience in the lake. She was very excited to tell the details of what happened. Do you speak to God often? All the time, don't you? Skeptical of the girls' stories, Dr. Ben suggests that they should perform additional tests to rule out any anomaly, 
For his part the pastor's position was very different, he asserts that there must be something very special in the little girl to be able to perform such miracles. I'm worried about her health. The news begins in the local media. Sarah soon receives visits from different people specialized in finding miracles for the girl, but her parents do not agree and ask them to leave. What if all those children don't have that same faith? What if they do? Sarah receives the people who are outside. Among them is Teresa, a young woman who suffers from cancer and adores horses. She is the girl that Sarah saw days ago in one of her dreams wanting to be her friend. I think she wants to be friends with me. She immediately recognizes her and goes towards her, takes her hands and start praying. Her parents, anxious for her, watch the girls and out of nowhere Teresa begins to show signs of improvement. <laughs> Next, Sarah cares for other children with difficulties, such as a blind girl and a disabled boy who are regaining their health before the astonished gaze of all those present and through the girl's miraculous prayers. Oh, no. what is happening? Once all had been attended to, Sarah goes to her house, but she faints at her entrance. Her parents, worried about her, quickly take her to the hospital, where the doctor performs some tests on her. Sarah's mother tells Dr. Ben that after Mark's miracle the girl was very weak, and she presumes that this is affecting her health, she is surprised, wondering how it is possible that her daughter performs those miracles. You know, you weren't there, but something really did happen. But the consultation is interrupted by a nurse, who notifies that the journalists are surrounding the medical center, while images of the girl are seen on the televisions, describing her as the girl of miracles. It's a miracle worker. We'll stick with this story. At the suggestion of Dr. Ben, they decide to isolate themselves at Grandpa Sam's house. And there, Sarah's mother, still confused and worried, says that since the girl told her that she saw God, she has noticed a great weakness in her daughter. At that moment, she receives a call from the doctor and breaks down in tears. On the other hand, the grandfather goes to the lake where Sarah assures that she saw God and angrily begs him to cure the little girl. Please don't do this! Don't take Sarah! Later, they receive a visit from the pastor and Dr. Ben, who informs them that the girl has a tumor in her head with no hope of recovery. They prevented the girl to be present while giving the news. Later the little girl listens to the diagnosis while she sees her mother crying inconsolably. <laughs> For this reason, she runs to comfort her mother, assuring her that she will be very happy when she goes to heaven and be with God. Faced with so much sadness, Sarah faints and is taken back to the hospital. When she wakes up, she is being attended by Cindy and Mark. Then they go to her grandfather's house where she finds Teresa is with her parents. The young woman reveals that while Sarah was praying for her, she could see an image next to her which extended her hand at the same time as the little one. It was a spiritual figure floating next to Sarah. The grandfather, convinced that Sarah could see something beyond normal in the lake, tells them that he has a plan together with the pastor to take the girl to that place, this being the girl's last wish, although she is aware of that the idea will not be accepted by their parents, however all those present decide to support them. So this is what I'm thinking. The plan is put into action, each one is in charge of a detail, while the grandfather and the pastor wait for her in the truck, Teresa puts on a wig to pretend to be Sarah, and Danny acts as a nurse, thus they manage to evade the medical staff and finally they get Sarah out of the hospital. The group achieves the objective, but no one realizes that a journalist is watching them and immediately informs the staff. Sarah's parents, upon finding out what happened, quickly go looking for her daughter. Go, go, I'll follow you! The vehicle where the convalescent is being taken is chased by the police as it is exceeding the speed limits, despite Danny trying to evade them. At that moment he is interfered with by a tree that fell in the middle of the road due to a storm some days ago. What are you doing here, man? You're trying to get your sister up to the lake, right? Out of nowhere, Bronder, the owner of the dog that Sarah resurrected, appears and is encouraged to help by guiding them through a shortcut to get to the lake faster, however the path is not easy, and suddenly they meet a wolf, who is scared by the dog. Finally, the young people arrive at the lake with Sarah, and immediately her parents, relatives, friends, and journalists arrive at the scene, but after all that effort though the little girl does not survive. <laughs> 
sadness overwhelms those present and surprisingly a strange white light is reflected in the lake, and in an impressive way, Sarah's soul leaves her body and heads towards that light where God awaits her. What is so surprising is happening that no one can believe what they are seeing. After this, they take Sarah's body to her house, there they find a drawing of her with God holding her hand, and another of her where she returns from heaven. Hope immediately seizes everyone, and Danny with great faith begins to pray with all his might. To everyone's surprise, the girl reacts and comes back to life, saying that she spoke to God, and told him that she was not ready to be in heaven yet. Thank you God. Sarah then leaves the house and surprises everyone who was there because they thought she was lifeless. She seizes the moment to give them a message of faith, and to let them know that the one who did her miracles was God, and that just as God uses her, he can also use each one of us. This is the summary of a Christian drama movie called The Girl Who Believes Miracles. Click here and do not miss the next story.